In the Return of the King film, our Hobbit heroes return home to find the Shire just as they left it. Its citizens completely unaware of their mighty deeds that kept them safe. But this isn't the actual ending of the Lord of the Rings story. In actuality, the Hobbits return to find their home destroyed and under the control of an evil force presumed defeated. After the battle for Middle-earth, they would fight the battle for the Shire. Today on Nerd of the Rings, we cover the scouring of the Shire. After the One Ring is destroyed, the Hobbits stay for a time in Minas Tirith before making their way home. They stop in Edoras for the funeral of King Theoden, then continue north, arriving at Isengard. Here they discover that Saruman, who was earlier expelled from the Order of the Astari by Gandalf, has been allowed to leave his fortress by Treebeard. The Fellowship finally comes to an end. As Aragorn returns to Gondor, Gimli and Legolas leave for Fangorn, and Gandalf and the Hobbits accompany Elrond returning to Rivendell. On the sixth day since their parting from the king, they journeyed through a wood, climbing down from the hills at the feet of the Misty Mountains, that now marched on their right hand. As they came out again into the open country at sundown, they overtook an old man leaning on a staff, and he was clothed in rags of gray or dirty white, and at his heels went another beggar, slouching and whining. So you have come to gloat too, have you, my urchins? He said. You don't care what a beggar lacks, do you? For you have all you want food and fine clothes and the best pipe weed for your pipes. Oh yes, I know. I know where it comes from. You would not give a pipeful to a beggar, would you? I would, if I had any, said Frodo. Despite all the damage that Saruman had done by attempting to overthrow Rohan, Frodo still shows the fallen wizard kindness. As the hobbits spend time in Rivendell before leaving for Bree, Saruman arrives in the Shire on September 22nd. By this time, his ruffians have controlled the Shire for nearly a year. Gandalf would leave the hobbits at the borders of the Shire, traveling to the home of Tom Bombadil. Frodo, Sam, Merry, and Pippin come to the Brandywine Bridge, where it is closed with a large spiked gate. The gatekeeper tells them that at the command of the chief at Bag End, no one is permitted entrance between sundown and sunrise. Merry and Pippin scale the structure and force Bill Fernie to open the gate. The hobbits begin their journey to Hobbiton. On their way, they encounter a group of hobbit sheriffs. The leader of the sheriff says, You're arrested for gatekeeping and tearing up of rules, and assaulting gatekeepers, and trespassing, and sleeping in shire buildings without leave, and bribing guards with food. And what else? said Frodo. That'll do to go on with, said the sheriff leader. I can add some more if you like it, said Sam. Calling your chief names, wishing to punch his pimply face, and thinking you sheriffs look a lot of tom fools. Undaunted, the hobbits continue on their way, coming across a group of ruffian men who say they answer not to a hobbit chief, but to a boss named Sharky. When Sam, Mary, and Pippin draw their swords, the men flee to gain reinforcements. Pippin rides to summon the Tooks, while Sam rides to the Cotton homestead, where Farmer Cotton and his sons gather their entire village to fight. After a brief skirmish between the hobbits and ruffians, the men surrender. The next morning, Pippin returns with his relatives as a group of nearly a hundred men approach. Thus begins the Battle of Bywater, where 70 men and 19 hobbits would lose their lives in the battle for the Shire. The hobbits march on to Bag End itself to deal with this chief, Sharky. Along the way, they see the devastation that has been wrought throughout their homeland. The party tree is cut down, and signs of wanton destruction are everywhere. As they arrive at Bag End, it is revealed that Sharky is Saruman. 
Mary looked round in dismay and disgust. Let's get out, he said. If I had known all the mischief he had caused, I should have stuffed my pouch down Saruman's throat. No doubt, no doubt. But you did not, and so I am able to welcome you home. There, standing at the door, was Saruman himself, looking well-fed and well-pleased. His eyes gleamed with malice and amusement. A sudden light broke on Frodo. Shaki, he cried. Saruman laughed. So you have heard the name, have you? All my people used to call me that in Isengard, I believe. A sign of affection, possibly. But evidently you did not expect to see me here. I did not, said Frodo. But I might have guessed. A little mischief in a mean way. Gandalf warned me that you were still capable of it. Quite capable, said Saruman. And more than a little. You made me laugh, you hobbit lordlings. Riding along with all those great people. So secure and so pleased with your little selves. You thought you had done very well out of it all, and could now just amble back and have a nice quiet time in the country. Saruman's home could be all wrecked, and he could be turned out. But no one could touch yours. Oh no, Gandalf would look after your affairs. Saruman laughed again. Not he! When his tools have done their task, he drops them. But you must go dangling after him, dawdling and talking and riding round twice as far as you needed. Well, thought I, if they are such fools, I will get ahead of them and teach them a lesson. One ill turn deserves another. It would have been a sharper lesson if only you had given me a little more time and more men. Still, I have already done much that you will find it hard to mend or undo in your lives, and it will be pleasant to think of that and set it against my injuries. Well, if that is what you find pleasure in, said Frodo, I pity you. It will be a pleasure of memory only, I fear. Go at once, and never return. Frodo declares that Saruman should be allowed to leave unharmed banished from the Shire. Many among the Hobbit crowd believe Saruman should be put to death for the wanton destruction he has caused, shouting, kill him, kill him. Saruman looked round at their hostile faces and smiled. Kill him, he mocked. Kill him. If you think there are enough of you, my brave Hobbits. He drew himself up and stared at them darkly with his black eyes. But do not think that when I lost all my goods, I lost all my power. Whoever strikes me shall be accursed, and if my blood stains the Shire, it shall wither and never again be healed. The hobbits recoiled, but Frodo said, Do not believe him. He has lost all power, save his voice that can still daunt you and deceive you if you let it. But I will not have him slain. It is useless to meet revenge with revenge. It will heal nothing. Go, Saruman, by the speediest way. Saruman calls Wormtongue so that they may turn to the road. As he passes by Frodo, Saruman springs into action, stabbing the hobbit. But the Mithril coat broke the blade, and Frodo is unharmed. Even then, he insists on showing mercy to Saruman. He says that Saruman was once great, of a noble kind. He is fallen, and his cure is beyond us. But I would still spare him, in the hope that he may find it. Saruman reveals his hatred of Frodo's mercy. You have grown, halfling, he said. Yes, you have grown very much. You are wise and cruel. You have robbed my revenge of sweetness, and now I must go hence in bitterness, in debt to your mercy. I hate it, and you. Well, I go, and I will trouble you no more. But do not expect me to wish you health and long life. You will have neither. But that is not my doing. 
I merely foretell. He also reveals that it was Wormtongue who had killed Frodo's relative, Lotho. Driven by Saruman's words and cruelty, Wormtongue stabs the wizard and flees with a yell, but is struck down by three hobbit arrows. To the dismay of those that stood by, about the body of Saruman a gray mist gathered, and rising slowly to a great height like smoke from a fire, as a pale shrouded figure it loomed over the hill. For a moment it wavered, looking to the west, but out of the west came a cold wind, and it bent away, and with a sigh, dissolved into nothing. Thankfully, Saruman's words that it would take many years to restore the Shire if he were killed would be proven false. Sam spreads the soil from the box of Galadriel around the Shire, helping bring the beauty of the Shire to its former glory. The Malorn seed he also received from Galadriel is planted where the party tree once stood. And that very year, 3020 of the Third Age, the year after Saruman's defeat, would be one of the greatest harvest years in the history of the Shire. As always, I want to say a huge thank you to my Patreon supporters who make this channel possible. Tom to Bombadil 19, Listen Me the Cinda, Mandu Pandu, Andrew Carlisle, The Mighty Mim, Sky Carcass, Slide Belts, Dane Ragnarsson, Salim Rahman, Zetrock, Berto Berg, Grand Strategy Nerd, Graham Derricott, The Dark Haired One, Wyland, Michael Wu, and Debbie. If you enjoyed the artwork in this video, check out the artists in the description and purchase prints of their great work for yourself. Thanks so much for watching and subscribing, and we'll see you next time on Nerd of the Rings.